We brought nothing into the world and we take nothing out. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. the body of our friend Walton with confidence in God the giver of life who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead we meet in the name of Jesus Christ who died and was raised to the glory of God the Father grace mercy and peace be with you all and we have come here today to remember before God our friend Walton, funny man, I ought to just say that over the last few days one of the strange things that's happened is people have asked me, have you got a picture of him on your phone? Luckily I did because you sent me one and uh, then people have shared pictures of him with me. That's never ever happened in six years that I've been here. So we're going to give thanks for his life through words that people share, through music, and we're going to commend him to God, who is our merciful redeemer and judge. And later on, we will return his body to God's care at Gilrose Crematorium. Throughout today, our job is to comfort one another in our grief, to stand with one another in our loss, but also to hold tight to the love and joy that we have received. We're going to sing in a moment. Before then, let us pray. O oh God of compassion, as we gather to say farewell to Walton, we wrestle with all that has taken place, with all that we have not chosen, we enter into the stillness of your mystery and ask for your healing grace to flow. 
be alive to us as our hearts are opened with, a, with sorrow for a life full of love and spirit has been lost. Lord, in our sadness contain us, in our grief comfort us. Bear the questions that have no answers and in our dark times bring us hope. And may we have the courage to leave Walton in your care. And when we are ready, the grace to let go into new life. Amen. Now, we're going to sing. We've only got one hymn uh, to sing. Uh, I am told that uh, Walton was uh, particularly particular about singing. I have seen him uh, on video singing. And I think it's also true to say that enthusiasm is more important than anything else. So you have one opportunity. We're going to sing, Oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder. The words are on the service book, but they'll also be on the screen. So uh, let us sing. How great thou art.
was beautiful. Could hear you singing. Please do be uh, seated. Uh, and Shelley's going to come up and do our first reading. Our Bible reading is from Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, verses 1 to 15. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather them in. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to search and a time to give up. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to mend. A time to be silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. What do workers gain from their toil? I've seen the burden God has laid on the human race. He has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also set eternity in the human heart, yet no one can fathom what God has done from beginning to end. I know that there is nothing better for people than to be happy and to do good while they live, that each of them may eat and drink and find satisfaction in all their toil. This is the gift of God. I know that everything God does will endure forever. Nothing can be added to it and nothing taken from it. God does it so that people will fear him, whatever has already been and what will be, has been before, and God will call them to pass to, to account. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Beautifully read, they've set the bar high for everybody else. Grace, want to come forward, deliver the eulogy. Now, do you want the lectern or do you want the handheld? Okay. <clears throat> Walton Lestroy. Emmanuel George, also known as Funny Man, Husband, Dad, Daddy, Dada, Grandad, Great Grandad, Papa George, Uncle, Brother. He held many titles. Grandad was born on Thursday, the 22nd of December, 1938, in Antigua, to his mother, Octavia Henry, and his father, Luther George. He grew up in All Saints Village, and as a young boy, attended the local school, and in his words, quickly developed a reputation for himself. His love of music began. He learned to play the drums in his school band, then, growing up, he also learned to play the steel pan. His talent was obvious, and later he joined another local band before making the decision to come to England, where his sister Sylvia had already made a home. I think most of us would agree, Grandad was a one-off. He was unique, one in a zillion. There was truly no one like him. He created us and was the glue that held our family together. Our king, the one that connects all of us. We, his family, wouldn't be here today if he had not made that journey across the water from Antigua in January 1961. When he arrived a few weeks later on February the 9th, in his own words, he said, I was so cold, I wanted to go straight back to Antigua. 
the land of my birth, but that was not possible. Imagine if he did. When he arrived, he quickly got a job at an engineering factory as a semi-skilled labourer. He was the only black one working there. He ended up working there for six and a half years. During that time, he got married and had a baby girl. He had settled into life in England with his wife and daughter and was full of hope and ambition. One day, someone who knew Grandad as a drummer recommended him to, as he said, one of Leicester's mainstream dance band leaders called Finian. He had asked him to fill in for his drummer for one night and ended up keeping him on permanently. The band was Finian's combo. They traveled up and down the country, playing at venues for a few years before it came to an end and Grandad started his own steel band, the Walton George Steel Band and later Steel Revolution. Grandad was someone who lived his life unapologetically. He lived it the way he wanted, when he wanted. Even if there may have been things we disagreed with, he did what he wanted, and that was his prerogative. Grandad had two main passions in life, music and family. They were his life. He lived for his music and for his family. He loved both in equal measure and would relish the times when we could combine the two. I'm sure most people here today will remember that Grandad was one of the founding members of the Leicester Carnival Committee in 1984 and helped to orchestrate the very first Leicester Caribbean Carnival in 1985 alongside Elvie Morton and went on to become the first ever Carnival King that year with his double A side, Wine, 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 Teresa and Viva, Viva, Leicester Carnival. He loved to teach others about music and said being a music teacher for Warwickshire County Council was the best job he ever had. He worked with and met the most amazing people who loved music as much as he did. He loved listening to music and he loved to make music. I'm sure most of us have been subjected to listening to another one of his new songs, but that was his passion. That was his talent. All he ever wanted was to share that with the world. He always said he wanted to go viral with his songs. That was his dream. Who knows, maybe we could still make that happen. Grandad lived a good and colorful life. Although we may not have agreed with some of the things he said or did at times, it was his life to live and he did that. Grandad was larger than life and woke up grateful to God every day. He was loud, stubborn and argumentative. He could start an argument with a brick wall. But what Grandad had in abundance was love. He always had a lot of love to give and always appreciated the same in return. Grandad has always said he loves all his children, no matter what kind of relationship he had with them, whether they were near or far. He always maintained that he loved them all, all his 12 children, 31 grandchildren, and 12 great-grandchildren. A lot of people knew of him, but only a few people really got him. Knew his ways, his quirks, his sense of humor, his meanings. He didn't call me his partner in crime for nothing. We all thought he would live forever, but it seems like God decided it was his time to leave this world and enter the next. Grandad wasn't everyone's cup of tea but I would have one of them every day if I could.
race, you should have taken the handheld mic because you could have dropped it at the end. <laughs> well done. Ryan, come up. Ryan, do you want handheld mic or the lectern? Okay. Before I start, know that if I, uh, if I break or if I wobble, that Grandad would be cussing me out somewhere rotten. <laughs> the world has changed. Walton George, funny man. Family, friends, acquaintances, strangers walking past this house. Doesn't matter how you knew him, he touched your life in one way or another. The pigeons outside his house are certainly going to miss him. As I've grown up through my 20s and 30s, I didn't get to see him as often as I would have liked. But I'd hear about him, and I'd know that he was OK. When I did see him, he'd make a joke, and he'd be like, what's your name? But as a kid growing up, the one constant male role model that I had was my granddad. Going to his house every Sunday without fail, getting chased and terrorized by his dog, Bingy, eating granddad's chicken and rice. Let me tell you, no one cooks chicken and rice like granddad. Sorry, Mum. Growing up, most kids have a grandparent or two. Some are lucky enough to have both. But how many are lucky enough to have one that played in a band? I knew that that he was special. He was a performer, a showman. Sometimes he would go in town and his band, Steel Revolution, would be playing somewhere in the city there would be crowds gathered around them, watching, dancing, and enjoying the incredible music created by Funny Man. I always wondered about that name. I sort of knew it came from Antigua, but to me it stemmed from the random outburst that he used to make when he was performing with the band. That was Funny Man to me. My mates all thought that he was incredible, and somehow I get some level of credibility because my granddad is like a rock star to them. He's playing with the band, enjoying the herb, everything that those youngsters liked. From an early age, granddad knew that I tried to sing a bit, but I never felt I was very good. He made me feel like I could do it. It was him that would say, Ryan, you're gonna sell a million records one day. I didn't believe it, but I always felt like if Grandad says it, then he must see something in me. He was my first, <laughs> of course in me. He was my first real musical inspiration. Watching him perform always made me feel proud. And looking back at my own musical history, I can see that I took a lot of the things in him into my own musical career, including the random outbursts. To my granddad, I say thank you. I sang, I performed, and I do what I do because you gave me the confidence to do it. The world has changed. We will always have your music, your songs, and your spirit. The world has changed because it will forever be touched by Walton George, footy man.
Two fantastic, a eulogy and a tribute, and we've heard about how important music uh, is. So we've got a time now just to reflect a little bit, and uh, Philip, where's Philip gone? Philip, you're going to uh, come uh, and play the playing bridge over troubled waters for us. Good man, in the own time.
Philip, thank you. Thanks for this because I'm getting old. Okay, remembering Dad. I'm Nicola, third born offspring of Walton George. I met him for the first time when I was in my 30s. Some of you know the story, the way the universe worked its magic. The stars were truly aligned that day. It changed my world forever. I didn't leave his side for three weeks. I wanted to know everything about him, every last detail. He welcomed me with open arms to a culture that I'd craved all my life. With music, dancing, parties, curried goat, rice and peas, a plate of salt fish, and not forgetting a glass of rum or two. But most of all, with love, a love we'd never known before. This was a gateway to discovery. Along with Dad came my beautiful siblings, Debbie, Helen, Louise, Jermaine, Gia, Paget, Carly, Emerson, and Abijah, and an abundance of nieces and nephews what an absolute blessing they have been. Before my daughter Leah passed away, she wrote me a letter to read after she'd gone. She spoke about how much our lives had changed when we met Grandad. So many precious memories with everyone and how sad she felt because she wouldn't get to make any more. Leah, more than anyone, knew how much finding Dad meant to me and the fact that I lived my life as Nicola made her happy. I now take comfort in the knowledge that Liam and Dad are together in some way. The last 20 years with Dad have been just how they were meant to be. Highs, lows and everything in between. And I wouldn't change a thing. I wouldn't change a thing. I will miss his tales, his words of wisdom. But most of all, hearing him say, Nikki, baby, I love you. Thank you, Dad. Thank you for your teachings. I've learned a lot. In the words of Funny Man, no regrets. You are what you are. Rest in eternal peace. I love you. Glad you all have used the lectern and not blocked my night so far. Cost me a fortune. Ben. Lectern or microphone? Okay. Just bear with me, I'll put my eyeballs on. can see. <sighs> Grandad, you are what you are. Believe that. Well, what can I say about Walton Lestroy Emmanuel George, aka Funny Man? I believe it was his father, Luther George, that had that name and funny man, and Grandad took it on throughout his life. He wasn't very technical, but always impressed me at his use of an iPhone. My Facebook would never be the same. <laughs> Walt and George shared a memory. When people say there's no Grandad like mine, there really wasn't. A man with great pride, a fierce protector of what was his, and make no mistake, like a lot of his sayings, if he was right, he was going to fight. But by the same token, if you are wrong, you can't be strong. If me are right, me go fight. If me are wrong, you can't be strong, man. <laughs> Grandad always said, you are what you are. And 
everybody different. <laughs> One thing for sure is that everyone here had their own relationship with him, whether that be by blood, friend, lover, or partner, whether that relationship was good or bad, or close or distant, he would always know how to deal with it. Grandad had so much passion, especially for his music. He wrote and arranged all of his songs in recent years, with the help of Emerson. He was the best pattern player I've ever seen. I remember when we were kids, and on many occasions, I'd say, where are we going, Mom? He said, we're going in town, because Grandad's playing. Usually, somewhere not far from the clock tower, you'd hear it before seeing it, the vibes. Hundreds of people all stopping to watch Grandad's band. The smiles on people's faces and how impressed they were. It was a sight to see. I always remember being so proud, and that's my granddad up there. Granddad had done many a performance over the decades before retiring. Every time in recent years, he'd ask me where I'd been working, and I'd tell him the place, and he'd say, yeah, I played there before, man. I always remember Leicester Carnival. Granddad would always be playing, usually at the forefront of the festivities. He knew how to perform. He was an entertainer. And as previously mentioned, Leicester's first carnival king. Who started carnival? Grandad was a man who never held back, and when he dug his heels in, boy, did he dig in. What I learned from Grandad mostly is that people are different, and just because someone doesn't do or say or conduct themselves how you'd want them to does not mean their actions should bring you down. Everything happens for a reason, and as long as you're happy and healthy, you will not go far wrong in life. Grandad experienced a whole lot coming over from Antigua in 1961 up to the present day. He always said he wanted to join the Navy and see the world, like I did, but he never got to go because Grandma tore up his papers. Thankfully, he didn't. Otherwise, all his children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren would not be here. It is fair to say that at times he was hard work. So, so stubborn. But as Grandad says, you are what you are. One thing, though, if you cross Grandad, he never forgot. Don't mess me up, you know. <laughs> Seeing him the day before he passed, it was so good. We had such a great time having a catch-up. As I arrived, the street was booming as he had a new Bluetooth speaker and he was playing his music, sitting outside, chilling in the sunshine. Yes, Benny Boy, as I walked up. The local council worker said, I need to make a complaint. The music isn't loud enough. He was feeding his pigeons with rice, as usual. I kept laughing because a local man passing through couldn't accept the fact that Grandad loved Boris and Trump. Me love Boris and Trump, man! Me love Boris and Trump! Before I left, he said, take me to the shop so we can get some drink, now, man. We went in, we got his stuff, and even before paying, he said, you want anything, Benny boy? I said, no, Grandad, I'm cool, man. I dropped him off and said goodbye. As I drove away, I even thought to myself, if that's the last time I see Grandad, I've had a great time this afternoon. I love Grandad. The next day, Grandad passed, and as sad as I am, the world does not stop. The sun rises each morning, and everybody grieves in different ways. When grieving a loved one, it is important to respect one's grief and to give them time and space. Grandad, I hope you are at peace. I miss you already an endless amount. Today, we celebrate your life. And finally, you are what you are. Rest in peace, Grandad. Me don't talk. Thank you, Ben. Carly, want to come and sing? Well, hello. <laughs> I didn't plan anything to say, um, but I'm going to sing. And it was my dad that put a song in my heart. <laughs> Give me my voice, I don't think I'm gonna be able to use it. Okay, give me a second. Uh. 
Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fear relieved. How precious did. That grace appear the hour I first believe my chance. We've got another Bible reading, which I think I'm reading. This is John 14, verses 1 to 6, and verse 27. Jesus said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. My father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, 
I will come back and take you to be with me, so that you may also be where I am. You know the way to the place that I am going. But Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? And Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives, but do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Here ends the reading. We're going to pray in a minute, uh, but I'm sort of loath to uh, follow uh, your tributes and eulogies. They've been uh, beautiful. Uh, suffice to say that there's some words that follow through uh, all the time, starting with the reading that Shelley did, which reminds us uh, of the wisdom of Solomon, actually, who's believed who wrote those uh, words. Uh, and actually is the only Bible verse that ever got to number one in the charts, which just links in the music. I'm going to come back to music in a minute, if I remember. Uh, but we heard quite a lot about stubbornness. I, I actually think uh, stubborn's uh, one of those strange words, because people who are stubborn have grit and determination, and to actually live through what Grandad, what your dad, what Walton lived through, you need grit and determination. Somebody who wasn't as stubborn would not have achieved uh, so much. And we heard uh, that again, you know, we are what we are. We have to cope with what life throws with us. And it's how we cope and how we share that that is really crucial. Uh, family and music seems like two pretty good things to, uh, to, to, to have as the main things uh, in your life. And the other thing that we heard time and time again played out in words and in song and in music were, was love. L love comes in many forms, doesn't it? Love is this amazing... Uh, it's a gift. It literally is a gift. You know, when they're at primary school, they're told that you know, gift is that gift that keeps on giving. If you give it, it grows. And that's what I've heard today. Now, the beautiful thing is, is that God is love. That it says in the Bible, God is love. God is the man love is the manifestation of God in our lives. And it says that those who live in love live with God. And crucially, God lives with them. It, all the other nonsense, and I, and I say this uh, with uh, some trepidation for what I'm about to say, but all that nonsense that we hear some, from some of the preachers who support Trump and Johnson, but about love is this or love is that, and puts restrictions on it or narrows it down, is wrong. The Bible doesn't say that. The Bible simply says, God is love. Live with love, live in love, share that love, and God lives with us. That's encompassed with that final reading that we had, which Jesus gave to his disciples when he was telling them he was about to go away. Now, his disciples were normal people like you and I. And instead of worrying about Jesus, they worried about themselves. Thomas said, Lord, we don't know where you are going. How will we know the way? Well, there's some really good news coming up in a minute. But before that, Jesus explained how God's kingdom, we call it heaven, but God's kingdom is so big that there are places 
for all of us. There's enough space and rooms for each and every one of us. And our needs and wants are taken care of. Walton, forgive me, Dad, Papa, get all of those. Funny man, he's there already. His needs are taken care of. And actually, when we are called on that journey, not only will Jesus come to take us on that journey, but I suspect we will hear the music when we get near, and you particularly, family and friends, will simply be able to follow the music that is laid out for each and all of you. Because that love will continue. And our task now, our task is to continue to live in that love and that grace and share it with one another. We're going to pray. At the end of the prayers, we'll pray the Lord, we'll uh, say the Lord's Prayer. Words are in the screen, but I'll put them, words are in the book, but I will put them up on the screen. And during uh, the Lord's Prayer, if the people who are going to carry the coffin can get ready to come out, at, at the end, then I'll ask you to stand uh, and we will commend Walton into God's care. But first of all, let us pray. We're going to pray for Walton. Lord, we give thanks for all that we have received from him. We thank you for the gifts of his earthly life, the blessings you gave Walton and the rich blessings that he has shared throughout his life. Loving God, thank you for the years that we've shared with him and for the love we have received from him. For the gift of Walton in our lives, our gratitude, his love, his joy, his stubbornness, and for all we now remember in a short time of quiet. For every memory of love and joy, every memory of a life well lived, and every sor sorrow shared with us, Lord, we give thanks. God of compassion, we pray for those who mourn today, for those whose need of you is very great. May we all embrace your promise of eternal life. And in our grief, receive your gifts of peace, hope, joy and faith. And through our lives, continue to share the love that has been shared with us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, you are tender towards your children and your mercy is over all your works. Heal any memories of hurt and failure and give us the wisdom and grace to use the right, the time that is left to us here on earth, to turn to Christ and follow in his steps in the way that leads to everlasting life. Amen. And let us pray now with confidence, as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. So, as I invite Mr James to come forward, uh, and the people who are going to carry Funny Man out of the church do also come forward just before we start <coughs> clapping. In a moment, I'm going to invite you all to stand up. When the music starts, please do clap.
and everything. But also remember that there will be somebody at the back of church, Jennifer and Geraldine will have a blue bucket. Please do give as generously as you can. All money donated is going to uh, the Leicestershire Music and Cultural Trust. So please be as generous as you can. Please do stand as we commend Walton into the mercy of God, our Maker and our Redeemer. God, our Creator and Redeemer. By your power, Christ conquered death and entered into glory. Confident of his victory and claiming his promises, we entrust Walton into your mercy. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who died and is alive and reigns with you, now and forever. Amen. As we leave, please do clap and cheer for a life well lived. Say how I get in all you'll think I is met Salah But my daddy yeah. I sure I ain't getting cool still hot like a Congo pepper I still could perform and function I could handle any action with satisfaction still guarantee Who disagree they tell it lie on me you I tell you, age is just a number Controlled by your state of mind Maturity is always better Especially if you feel it fine Believe me, age is just a number The golden years can be defined Is after 68 is over you could really enjoy 69 The girls that we have in town Respect you when you're a champion They like when you're big and strong and know how to jam in a section. I may not be too muscular, but I have the vim and vigor. Any family younger man could claim with me is the same. Don't let old talk drive you insane. I tell you, age is just a number. With experience. a long time as old as I am no teenager can't beat me when it comes to wine people come to me in truth what is my secret? Is it the fountain of youth? Oh, be a voodoo or black magic? They never believe the answer when I tell them so can fever is what have me always feeling glad. I never said I love to jam and live life hard. I tell you. Find why some.
some get weaker, some get stronger While getting all at the same time Believe me, age is just a number The girls declare openly brave That they rather have a old man lover Rather than to be some young boy To judge this book, it by the cover. Open every page and look, then read every verse and chapter. 